Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Motor Gang here, and today we're going to be breaking down the 2.1 game manual update that dropped earlier today. There's nothing in here that's like absolutely game changing, but there are a fair number of small changes that do add up. So make sure you stick around to the end, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and let's get into it. So first up, we have some clarifications to the definition of a major violation, clarifying that if you have enough minor violations, such as like throwing blocks out of the field, those do carry over into elimination matches. This is kind of something that was already like clarified in some Q&As, but it's good to have it a bit more clear and blatant inside the game manual, although I don't particularly love the way that this rule actually functions, but clarity is good. Oh, and as always, we will have the newer version of the game manual 2.1 on the right-hand side and 2.0 on the left-hand side, just to be able to compare new versus old. We also have a definition for a code of conduct related violation. This was kind of some stuff that wasn't explicitly in the game manual. It was in like the code of conduct stuff. So it's good to have it like officially in the game manual. So we have S2, which is like keep stuff inside the field. G1, respect. G2, uh, G2 and G4 kind of both don't be mentor built. G5 is team swapping. Our run through R4 are like actually building an illegal robot, not like having your mentor build it for you, but like, I don't know, slapping nine motors on your robot. That would be that sort of thing, because obviously you're intentionally cheating there. And then major violations of safety. So I don't know if like your robot was a bomb or something. That would also be a code of conduct violation. And then yeah, code of conduct violations get brought to the event part. This is all stuff that's like in the code of conduct reporting process, but this just wasn't in the game manual previously, so probably a good thing. Next up, we have another thing that was kind of in there already, but now more clarified. So if you do something illegal, like illegally score a block, um, that should not, like the referee shouldn't uh, change the score. They should still score the match as it is. They should only like, but they should consider those things. Like if you score one block legally, that's three points. So if you like win the match by three points or less, they shouldn't like deduct the three points from you. They should instead just like DQ you at the end of the match. And it actually used to be that you didn't do this back in, like, tipping point with, like, the parking violations. You could actually, like, get 30 points to the other team. It was, like, a penalty of 30 points, basically. And that didn't work well for a couple of reasons, because DQing is actually much better than, like, that way. Because, one, your alliance partner doesn't get punished if you do something stupid. And, two, you then also lose your, like, win points and autonomous points, which, if you do something illegal in a match and need to be DQ'd, you probably should lose. So, good clarification there, but again, nothing too new. Previously, Autonomous used to only be an instant loss and go to the other team if you committed a rule violation that affected the outcome of Autonomous, but I think sometime last year or early this year, they changed it to any violation, like last year if you picked up three rings, even if you didn't do anything with those three rings, you would still automatically lose auto, so now this is reflected that if you just commit any violation, if both teams just both commit violations, nobody gets auto bonus. This is an update to G1, which most people probably weren't expecting. Um, where basically it says event attendees are not allowed to record audio or video of team's discussion with head referees or other event staff such volunteers. So it's probably a good thing that we don't have people recording their conversations with the head referee and posting them on Discord. But it's also a kind of a bad thing that like there is no record of these conversations and it could go into like a he said, she said thing. Um, but I get why this rule is here. I don't like that like there is no... I guess paper trail, but it's not paper, it's like video. Um, but I will not be elaborating on this. Those who know, those who know, I do not want big GDC coming after me right now. Uh, next up, this is just like G4, G5. This was officially in a Q&A and they implemented it in there. This is like extremely important stuff. Up there, top right corner, watch this video if you have not watched it already, because this is actually like game changing stuff. Basically, hole counting is banned. And you don't technically need an engineering notebook, but you need an engineering notebook realistically. This is something I actually brought up to the GDC. Previously, the wording was, if a team does not participate in any qualification matches, they cannot be considered for judged awards. And this was kind of, um, had some ambiguity. We had some discussion about this where, is, does this mean that if a team does not participate in any qualification matches, meaning like they don't show up to any quals, or if they don't participate in any of their qualification matches like they miss even just one qualification match they can't be considered for judged awards and this was already what i knew because again i talked to the gdc about this but it's been clarified so that you have to miss all of your qualification matches as long as you show up to at least one you're still considered for judged awards but like don't just show up to one qualification match to get judged awards because like a qualitative judgment is important and like i would probably never give a thing to a team that only goes to one match and like 
you also have code of conduct stuff like if you don't show up to matches that can be a g1 violation for not supporting your alliance partner so like just show up to your matches it's a robotics tournament you're there to do robots so this shouldn't ever need to be relevant but sadly it is just go to your matches people but i guess if you're like an idiot and just miss one match um at least you're not dq'd from judge awards next up we have some changes to timeouts so first of all it says that the quest should never be denied if the alliance legitimately needs more time because i guess it does technically say each alliance gets one three minute timeout which they may request during the elimination bracket it's so like i don't know i'm guessing maybe there was some scenario with like an event partner was like we're too far behind schedule we can't give the th three minute timeout bonus but yeah like you should do that as long as assuming they're not just like trolling and then yeah timeout can end early if both alliances and the head ref agree that just yeah, makes sense. Like, no point sitting around there. This was kind of in a Q&A, so it's some changes. And this was actually, like, at the Nebraska SIG. This was after the Q&A dropped, so this was enforced, and I got to see it. And if you, like, watch videos from the Nebraska SIG, you'll see. Basically, sticking things into the top of the goal to get blocks out is legal, but you need to get in, get the blocks out, and then go. You can't just, like, hang out inside there because you're grappling onto the field, which is a GG9 violation. And also is being added to rule SG10. I have both the rules here because they kind of go hand in hand. So basically, you can't stick your stick in there and like block people from scoring now or use it to like anchor your robot to the field. That's not allowed. But yeah, you can still descore, just get the descore stick in, push the blocks out, get the descore stick out. That's still perfectly legal. And descore sticks were still highly effective based on what I saw at Nebraska. If you force an opponent into a penalty and that ends up being match affecting, you get DQ'd, which like makes sense. I can't think of any examples off the top of my head where you could force your opponent to do something illegal that would result in you winning the match. So I'm not exactly sure what that would be, but I guess if this does happen, um, there's a rule for it now. So I suppose that is cool. This rule is kind of weird. So if blocks um, is like on its way out of the field, but like it hits like if the field's up against a wall and it hits the wall or like the field monitor or like a person, then somebody a scorekeeper or head referee should reach into the field and take the block out um i don't love this rule for a couple of reasons one as a referee i do not want to stick my hand in the field with a bunch of robots driving around and grab blocks out of it um that does not sound fun or safe additionally it also says that it has to be determined by the head referee so like the scorekeeper referees need to wait for the head referee to tell them this block was supposed to go out and like it just seems more convoluted like this doesn't inherently give an advantage to either the red or blue alliance. It just, like, kind of depends. So, like, I would kind of rather this just wasn't a rule. But, like, it just seems like it's going to get complicated. But realistically, it's also pretty much never going to pop up. So, there's that. Then they did clarify that match loads should be introduced one at a time. You cannot introduce two match loads at once. You need to go one match load, two match load, three match load. With, like, enough gap that they pass through the top of the loader in between each time. That's kind of in the picture if barely have the top cropped in there but like if you scroll down here in sg9 kind of shows you the image of you got to wait for the block to pass through the top section of it before you can put another block in additionally they updated it so that park violations that are match affecting should be a dq which like yeah this makes sense if you illegally stop me from parking and i lose the match by four points i should have won the match because i should have gotten the eight points from parking so makes sense uh i like this rule i think this was already in like some q a's and stuff anyways um, they clarified that the long goal needs to get three blocks in the control bonus to be considered full. This was kind of the way things were already done, but I guess clarification doesn't hurt. Um, you're now allowed... The control zones have a much stricter tolerance on how tight the tape must be. This is good, um, because if you go with one-inch tolerances on the tape, that's an absolutely massive amount. That's like... If you do each one in by one inch, like the right side and the left side, that's like an entire half block out there. So... Yeah, that's not ideal. I don't even know if you'd be able to fit in three blocks in the zone anymore. So quarter inch is much more reasonable. And just a couple other things. You're now allowed to, like, tape the metal plates down so that the goals don't, like, pop up. I'm sure you've seen some videos of that. Um, robot skills fields must be consistent. It makes sense. Um, and then if you're at a league, you can't just run skills. If Even if you're in the league, if you're not running qualification matches at that individual session. And I think that kind of wraps it up. So let me know your thoughts about this manual down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you in the next one.